Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In today's video, we're taking a look at the Anbernic RG351V. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, taking a quick look at the box here, and it's surprisingly minimalistic. It tells you exactly what you need to know and nothing really more. Inside the box here, we have the RG351V, a USB-C charging cable, a tempered glass screen protector, and a couple of instruction manuals. My device did come with a 16 gigabyte micro SD card. Taking a look at the layout of the buttons on the face of this device, we have the D-pad, the joystick, select start function, as well as the ABXY. The D-pad on this one feels very nice. It pivots nicely and feels pretty solid. The joystick on this one feels very similar to the joystick on the Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons. In fact, comparing them here and they are nearly identical. So is the button placement of the ABXY buttons. This device has two micro SD card slots, one for the main operating system and some ROMs and the second one specifically for additional ROMs. It also has a headphone jack and two USB-C ports one for charging and a controller and the other one specifically for an external controller. The right side of this device has a power switch and a reset button. The left side has a volume rocker. And on the back, it's got R1, R2, L1, and L2 buttons. In terms of size, here's the RG351V beside a Game Boy Color and an original Game Boy. It's a little bit bigger than the Game Boy Color and a little bit shorter but wider than an original Game Boy. If you're curious on measurements, here's the Game Boy Color. Here is the RG351V and here is the original Game Boy. As for thickness, here's the 351 beside the Game Boy Color and here it is beside the original Game Boy. Here it is back to back against the Game Boy Color and here it is back to back against the original Game Boy. Booting the 351V up does take a little bit of time. It's not instantaneous. One of the very first things I did on this device was check out the controls, make sure everything is working as intended. And it's safe to say here, the controls were working absolutely fine. Fun fact, if you try to use this device without the micro SD card, it won't work. Now this device has a lot of settings in the menu. It's highly configurable considering it's running emulation station. You can change up the themes, you can change up the controls, you can change up a heck of a lot of things. The 351V also has the ability to connect to a wireless network. This is one feature that I actually really appreciate. Connecting to the wireless network lets you download things like box art and information about games you own as well as updates. You can also download additional themes if you're looking to do that. In the game settings menu, you can change the game aspect ratio. You can take off shaders if you want. There are some options here that will be very familiar if you've ever used RetroPie. Now, I was a little disappointed that my device did not really come with any games other than 2048 and Mr. Boom. I've seen other devices out there come preloaded with a bunch of games, and fortunately mine had none, which means I have to load them up. Now plugging the included micro SD card into my computer, and I can see it split up into a couple different partitions. We have Emuleck and we also have games. If I open up games here, there really isn't anything at all. I can see bezels, which is, well, it's almost empty. There's a couple of things in here. And if I go into BIOS, there's nothing. There's not a whole lot on this card. Now, since I'm going to have to move my games over to this device and probably configure a whole bunch of stuff manually, I might as well just upgrade the operating system while I'm at it. Custom operating systems do exist for the 351. The whole purpose of them is to give you a better experience than stock. So it kind of makes sense to upgrade. There are two that I recommend here, ArcOS and 351 Elec. Now 351 Elec, it's made for three different devices. The RG351 P, M, and V. You can kind of argue that's two different devices, but we're kind of splitting hairs now. Whereas Arc OS, this one is specifically tailored for the 351 V, and that's the device that I have. So this is the operating system that I'm going to use. To download Arc OS, all I have to do is scroll down to the bottom of the page. There are a couple of different versions here. And there are a couple of different places to get it, so I can get it from Google Drive or also Mega Uploads. Either of these will work. The file size for ArcOS is a little bit bigger than 351 Elec. It's coming in at 2.94 gigs. Now this operating system is on a 7-zip file. If you can't open a 7-zip file, I have a video on how to do it and I'll leave it in the description below. To write the operating system to a micro SD card, I will be using Belina Etcher. It's a free program and it works very, very well. 
I'm also not going to be using the stock micro SD card that's included with the device because it's cheap and prone to failure. I do recommend upgrading it. I'm going to be using a SanDisk micro SD Extreme. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to check it out. Installing the OS is really simple and straightforward. First up, you have to extract the file that you downloaded for ArcOS because it is zipped. So that is a pretty simple process. It might take a bit of time considering it is a big file, but afterwards just open up Belina Etcher. From here, select Flash from File and select the file that you just extracted. Something to note here, ArcOS is coming up as 7.99 gigs. So if you put in a four gigabyte micro SD card, this is not going to fit on it. You will have to pay attention to that. The default micro SD card is 16 gigs. Uh, so if you have a 16 gig, great. If you have something bigger, even better. I'm using a 64 gig card just for reference. So from here, I'll select my target, which is my 64 gig card, and then I'll click flash and that's about it. The ETA for flashing is just a couple of minutes. If you run into issues flashing, maybe just try reformatting your micro SD card if there's an issue there, or maybe even just try re-downloading ArcOS. Sometimes there's an issue with the download and you have to re-download it for it to work. Now booting up ArcOS for the very first time, it does take a little bit of time here. It's got to create a proper file system and it has to do first boot operations. So just be patient. Just like the stock firmware, ArcOS uses emulation stations. So the menu system is extremely similar. You also have access to RetroArch. Once everything's booted up and ready to go, power off the device and take out the micro SD card because now you have to put the games on it. So I plug the micro SD card back into the computer and I can see a drive called EasyROMs. So opening this up and I can see a whole bunch of systems labeled on folders here. This is what I was looking for on the initial micro SD SD card that was provided with the system. These are all the systems that the 351V can emulate. So all I have to do is just transfer my ROMs into these folders. Something to note as well, you probably already noticed this, but there are a lot more systems on here than initially advertised for the 351V. Once you reinsert the micro SD card and boot up your system with your ROMs on it, all of your game systems should be automatically detected and available in the main menu. Now going into the NES, I can see DuckTales and Excitebike because I just put them on the system. There is no information about these games. I have to use the scraper to download the additional information. Make sure the device is connected to your Wi-Fi network. Go down to scrape now and download your information. Once you click start, it'll automatically start doing everything for you. It does take a bit of time. The more games you have here, the longer it's gonna take. And once it finishes, your games list here should look a heck of a lot nicer. If they're not showing up like this, just restart the system. Testing out some gameplay here. NES games play very nice and I'm really surprised at this screen. It looks great. SNES games play good as well. I'm not noticing much of an issue. And the system even seems to be handling Star Fox here. There were a few audio hiccups, but aside from that, the game seems to be running okay. If you are running into some issues with certain games, you can go into the emulator settings and change up the emulator that the system's using. Now, not all systems have a ton of customizability in terms of emulators here, but some of them do. For example, the N64 here has a few different emulators to choose from, and the Dreamcast has a few different cores. I wasn't overly impressed with the PSP emulation. Some games work, some games don't, and some games have some serious slowdowns. If you're playing a racing game, races generally get better after the second lap or so, but at the same time here, performance was not that great. I found Dreamcast emulation also was really hit and miss. The system struggled in some places, and the graphics settings here, well, they've been kind of mangled just to make the system run. Here's CVS2 up and running just to give you an idea of how the game runs. The graphics settings aren't the best. You can't really crank them here because the system can't really handle it. And with Third Strike here on Dreamcast, the graphical issues are a little bit more apparent. Just take a look at Ibuki. Game Boy Advance here played very well. I was very impressed with how the system handled it. It is worth pointing out that at some point here, I accidentally hit some sort of button combination to throw my controls into turbo mode. It took a little bit of time to figure out how to turn that off. If you are curious, here is Banjo-Kazooie up and running. This system doesn't handle N64 the best, but N64 games are playable. Sometimes there are slowdowns, sometimes there are graphical issues, and sometimes there are audio issues. For those that are curious, yes, GoldenEye 007 does work in ArcOS. It's actually pretty impressive they were able to get this game running. 
Now it doesn't work perfectly. There are some graphical glitches, there are some slowdowns, and sometimes the audio is off, but the game is playable. Uh, maybe not the most enjoyable experience, but at the same time, if you're just desperate to play it, well, you can. I'll shoot these barrels here in turn just to show you what I mean by sometimes there's a bit of a stutter. Interestingly here, the CPS3 arcade version of Third Strike ran better than the Dreamcast version. Here's a quick sample of some gameplay. It was running a lot smoother than I thought it was going to be. There's no graphical issues. Everything is running really well, and this was a very pleasant surprise. Now, in terms of price, the RG G351V is available on the Ambernex site for 109 USD. It's also available on Amazon here for 119 to 130 bucks. Now let's go over what I liked and what I didn't like about this to see if it's worth it. First and foremost, I love the screen on this one. This is an amazing screen. It's clear, it's crisp, it's easy to see. Big thumbs up here. I also like the controls on this. The D-pad is very good. The joystick is very good. It feels very similar to a Joy-Con joystick without the drift so far. Overall, this is pretty good. The L1 and L2 buttons, I didn't really like the placement. I found them a little bit awkward to use. But at the same time here, I just remapped my controls so I didn't have to use them at all. I just used R1 and R2 instead. Next up, they say it's got an eight hour battery life and I say that's pretty reasonable. I like that there's a headphone jack on the bottom here. I like the two USB-C ports. So if you wanted to use a controller with this and charge it at the same time, you absolutely can. I also like the fact that there are two micro SD cards you can use in this. If you have a lot of games you want to plug in, well, this will have space for it. Now, in terms of the gameplay here, everything from PlayStation down, I had no issues with. N64 was kind of hit and miss, more miss than hit. Uh, but at the same time here, if you're into emulating the older systems, then this was absolutely fine. On top of that, the choice in operating system was really nice. I could choose between Arc OS or 351 Elec, or just keep it stock if I wanted to. The amount of things you can tinker around with this is amazing. I liked how much customizability you have. Now for the dislikes about this device. First and foremost, I've talked about this one a little bit, but I don't like the L1 and L2 button placement. I just found it really uncomfortable. If you want to emulate Dreamcast games, Kind of forget about it. I mean, it will do it, but not the best. On top of that, if you're looking to emulate N64 without issues, well, look again, look away. Uh, anything above the PlayStation here, this device doesn't handle well, and that's because the CPU on this is a little bit outdated. I wouldn't mind seeing a device with an updated CPU. I think it would do a device like this wonders. I mean, this does great with older systems, but I mean, if you want to emulate GameCube or Wii or 3DS or anything on this, completely forget it. Now, I think my absolute biggest dislike about this device is it's not the most beginner friendly. The micro SD card that I had didn't have any ROMs on it. Uh, it didn't have the folders necessary for those ROMs, so you'd have to create them and upload them. The included micro SD card was not a very high quality SD card. It is prone to failure and mine might have been failing. I'm not too sure. I'm not quite sure why mine uh, didn't have the necessary file system in order to import all the ROMs. That is a big downside because of an ease of use point of view here. If you give this to someone who's not very familiar with retro gaming devices, not very familiar with emulation, they're not even going to be able to get their games on it. And that isn't really a good thing. As much as I wanna say, hey, this is a great gift for someone who is into retro gaming a little bit, wants to play some retro games, at the same time, the moment they have to add some games or service this device in any way, shape or form, they're not gonna have a good time. It's gonna get very confusing very quickly. It's almost easier just to emulate a game on your phone. If you can set up and configure a Raspberry Pi without issue, you'll have no issue with this. But if you can't do that, I wouldn't recommend picking up this device. So at $119 on Amazon or 130 bucks not on sale, do I recommend this device? And the answer is yes, absolutely. If you're a fan of retro gaming, if you know what you're doing here with emulators, then this is a very fun device. If you want to emulate older systems, this is a great way to do it. It's a standalone device that functions very well and surprisingly has really good community support. 
Having ArcOS and 351 Elec as available options on this is amazing. Overall here, the RG351V surprised me. It was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. The controls were miles better than I thought they were going to be. This is not a bad, I, I almost said little, it's not a bad device overall. I mean, it's, it's small per se, but it's not tiny. I mean, my hand can cover it. Uh, but at the same time, there are smaller devices out there and smaller devices made by Ann Burnick. So that is something to consider as well. Overall, yes, this gets a big thumbs up. Great job, Ann Burnick. And thanks for providing this for a fair and honest review. Anyways, that is all I've got for today. Let me know your thoughts on the RG351V in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Thank you everyone, take care.